Good evening, everyone. I presume someone can hear me out there. Uh, I'll click the comments and I'm just going to do a share. So just bear with me, everyone. There we are. I think I should have shared that to uh, out to the public. Ben out there. Everyone out there. Just give me a comment. Say hello. Um, tonight we've got two de two guests, Danny and Janet. Uh, they're going to be talking to us about personal experiences in a previous house, um, and these are first-hand accounts and first-hand experiences, which. Um, I'm always interested to hear people's own personal stories about what's happened. So I will now click and bring Danny and Janice in. And there we are. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? All right. Good. Very good. Very good. Um, Right, the, the purpose of tonight, and there'll be a few more of these because there's quite a few other people that are interested in talking about their own personal experiences, which, of course, we all have. I set out to gather or try to gather recordable evidence when I go out doing paranormal, photos, video, um, audio. But personal experiences are somewhat different because you haven't always got recording equipment around. So... Danny and Jan, this is really about a previous house of yours, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, how long did you live there? Altogether, me, 11 years. Right. And I lived there for seven, seven, seven or eight years. And this is going to sound odd, Jan, but you said you were effectively, would you say, bothered, mithered or haunted for quite a long time, a number of years? Yeah, very long time. Um right. Me and my children, yeah. Um, it was every day. Would the you world... say it was really troublesome or was it something got worse or you got used to it? It was troublesome and <laughs> it was frightening and expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> uh, the electricity bill was would be through the roof to the point it was a council house and i phoned the council they come and rewired it the electrician said there was a, a power surge somewhere in the house but they couldn't find it but yeah it was using so much electricity wow the light bulbs were blowing i would have 10-year warranty light bulbs and they just blow within about half an hour they'd blow did um, the electricity people ever monitor the um, voltage levels or anything like that? Did it ever get to that extent to try and yeah. take it down? And did yeah. they ever did they ever account for it? No. But there was obviously noticeable peaks in electricity that blew the bulbs. Yeah. Surges. Yeah. Surges. What yeah. other sort of what else, other sort of things did it damage in the house then? Um. Uh, like well, the TV was control. was a TV affected or anything like that. TV was affected. It would you'd have I'd have the controls on top of the fireplace and my sofa would set back and my chairs and the kids and I'd be sitting watching the telly and it'd go over and over and it'd turn the telly over. The loud the sound would go loud. It'd go really low, um, which you could say was the telly hmm. toys. Uh, battery operated toys I'd pull the batteries out because they go off all the time right. and they go off with no batteries um, radios, ordinary AM FM radios 4 o'clock you... in the morning, every morning <laughs> my stereo would be full blast downstairs and was there anything significant on it i.e. voices or noises or anything unusual just blaring music right, right so it, <laughs> I mean 
as somebody who researches paranormal, I would say I would love to hear voices or something like that. But this effectively was just the switching of the technology. It's being switched on. It's, was it trying yeah. to grab your attention or something? I think so. Um, <laughs> and it got your I attention. Had two, I had two dogs and the dogs were barking corners, just sit there growling and barking at corners and there's nothing there. Right, right. So, so did you ever see anything like an apparition or, or anything like that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay, come on, <laughs> do tell. What did you see? <laughs> I could hear and see things. Um, <coughs> all my kids were in school and I would hear somebody shouting mum, well, a child shouting mum, mm. um, and I'd be looking around the house. I couldn't blame it on next door. We were attached onto one house next door and it was empty. Right. It's been empty for years. Right. Um, so you could rule that out. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to be coming from upstairs, and I'd go upstairs, and there was nothing there. Um, well, you get someone walking up and down the stairs, stairs yeah. all the time. It was, it was a, you, you, know, you, you just give up, kind of like checking because yeah, yeah. It, but you did someone walk up the stairs. Right. Um, but what did you feel in did you ever feel threatened or in fear then of anything yeah. physically happening to you frightened to death in my bedroom my own bedroom absolutely right. frightened to death so, uh, i i could when i was lying in bed i could hear as i was breathing somebody else was going oh, down my ear right and it would frighten me um yes. and then i'd look into the wall where i was facing and there'd be a hand You'd see a shadow and then a hand would come out as if it was going to grab you. It was absolutely terrifying. I'd get the, the, the clothes, the bed clothes pulled off me. I'd get my hair pulled. Um, you could never get touched. Yeah. yeah. Get touched. How, how, how on earth did you stick it so long? I had nowhere else to go. Oh, it's okay. That's why I had nowhere else to go. Um, I even went down to our local vicar to try and bless the house. They told me he wasn't going there because it was haunted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so is yeah. he saying? Is he saying he knew it from previous occasions? Before? No, he said they're not uh, going there if there's that much trouble. No, not going there. I mean, so, I mean, before before you moved in, do you think he knew about it? Uh, I'd asked people that had lived there before, and they said they'd not noticed anything. Right. Um, but. No, I mean, the gentleman that lived on, it was another block, he, I asked him, he, he was an undertaker from that area, and he'd never heard of anything. Right. So whether he'd been fetching them home, I don't know. <laughs> How did you manage to comfort your kids then, if they were experiencing some of these things? It was very hard. Yeah. Very hard. Yes. Um, some of them would wake up with scratches. Yeah, oh, you could stand there and be talking to them and they'd have scratches down the face or scratches down their arms, yes. scratches on their legs. And it's not just a scratch, it'd be bleeding. Christ, you know? yeah. 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 Um, they'd have their hair pulled, the school stuff would go missing. Um, I used to try, I went to... Um, a, a spiritual church and try to get some um explanations there but i didn't get much joy no. um it was really terrifying for us all none of us would have, would, would like staying in a room or in the house on our own you know even going to the bathroom you'd see your breath in you know if something was going to happen you'd see your breath in front of your face and you'd hurry up even with a shower or anything like that, you feel like you're being watched. I mean, this, I don't know if you've ever listened uh, during the summer to Kieran O'Keefe's um, Enfield Poltergeist story that was mm -hmm. dramatised for radio. I mean, you're, what you're talking about sounds very reminiscent, or there's, a, there's, there's parallels to it, not exactly. Yeah, well, I had a, a cast iron bed, mm. and it was, I couldn't move it. It was that heavy, I couldn't move it. Yeah. And it used to shake when I was in it. Okay. Literally shake. Right. Yeah. Uh, just just say a quick hello to some people that's joined us. Holly's there, Mandy's there, Sheena's there, Mal's there. So hi guys. Um how well, did you how did you kid, kids cope with it? 
Um, uh, one of my daughters would wake up every night screaming. Yes. Um, and she'd be dreaming, saying there's blood on her hands right. all the time. Blood on her hands. Right. And the other one would be would wake up vomiting. And it, it really only affected the girls, not the not the boys. Right, right. Um, because through the house, that's how we met. Yeah, we that's met. how we met through the house. What so, through like a, a spiritual a thing. I got a paranormal team in called Celtic Ghost Club. Oh yes. yes. Uh, through a friend of my son's, my eldest son. Yes. And he came to check the house out, and we were standing in the living room. Um, just chatting and he got too close and there was a big scratch down his arm and it was bleeding um, he was absolutely petrified he was mm -hmm. taking pictures in a room which was dark but had a mirror in it and he was taking pictures of the mirror with a flash and it was just black right so absorbing the light somehow yeah so when we met we were asked to come up to the house and at the time steve was with us yeah uh and steve went in and just sort of done baseline levels and we stayed outside me and mix and now at this time i was well in well past my level two reiki so i've been working with energies continuously for about six or about six or eight months so i was really attuned to energies and as me and mix walked into the house it was thick negativity mm. Uh, you could. It, the only way to explain it was say you could feel like you could cut it with a knife. It was so powerful, so strong. Um, me and Mix had a walk around. We had a look, and we would. Do, it was just taking our breath away. Then all of a sudden, it just dropped and left. Went. That was it. Gone. Then it was really, uh, it really mellowed out, and we were kind of like doing some little bits of investigations. One thing we did that was a little girl laugh. We were all standing in the room and we heard a little girl laugh yes. from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we've got a recording that we'll play later of the little girl. Uh, and so that's I, Danny, at, at that time, because obviously I, I met um, most of you through Celtic Ghost Club anyway and Migs as well. And yeah. Migs, is, Migs is a very strong character. What did she make of it? She'd never experienced anything like it. Right. Okay. This thick negativity, this thick negative atmosphere. Yeah. Um, no wonder there was so much bad going on. But that that uh, atmosphere. Once me and Jan got together, I moved in, started living there. When we started noticing this, yeah. And there uh, we started putting links, to the, linking stuff together. You know. Was, but, uh, there any, was there any change in the activity or energy when you two got together and lived together there? Did anything change? Yes. Go on, elaborate. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't feel it as much. It wasn't, um, before I met Danny, I used to walk, well, walk up my stairs and I, I would have to have the light on. I was 42 years old and I had to sleep with the light on. <laughs> I couldn't go anywhere in the dark. If I had to go up in the dark, I could see this man running after me. Um, and he, he was a big, big man running upstairs after me. And I'd be petrified because it was only me and five children in the house. Yes. You know. Um, how, so, did, how, did, how did things change when Danny came along then? What, what would you say? Uh, you came along and we had a, a paranormal evening there, didn't we? Um, I explained how things were going on. Um, so the when kids... I was spending a lot more time there, the things that were being moved stopped. Yeah. Sort of start. Things that were getting thrown around, the electro, all the electrical things stopped because I wasn't afraid. I was like, wow, this is ace. You know, <laughs> I have a totally different kind of well, like idea of it. So what we found eventually was uh, whatever was coming in was sort of uh, feeding on negative energy they were feed that it was feeding on our fear yeah sorry, on that fear. was just the word that came into my mind then yes yeah yeah, yeah. so well because... i have teenage uh, sons and daughters and it 
they were obviously high energy um and i had newborn there as well you know my youngest daughter was born to work in that house mm. so that was high energy that was new energy mm. um so yeah it was it was frightening it was feeding off fear mm. the more fear we gave it the stronger it got so when you moved in danny did you take that on board and and try and posit add positivity to take fear away yeah. yes yeah that that was it see one of the things about our species if there's something we can't work out or we don't understand mm. we either try and destroy it or we fear it yes um, which is a natural thing for us to do and then you've got all the movies that and all that type of thing all the horror stuff which is kind of like building upon that fear so when you get to the point you come into this sort of situation you are naturally attuned to fear yes you know uh, and then it would be uh, whatever it was there would and there was many different things there it wasn't just like one entity there was many different types as well which was quite strange because uh, we had a little girl we had the big mm. fella mm -hmm. uh, we've had a few apparitions that had happened did you ever figure out how they all come to be there then i just think it was the area mm. and they weren't all there all at the same time okay. it was different things coming in there, there was one thing that we would do on a friday we usually have a drink Right. And sometimes uh, we'd start to get argumentative, then we'd start rowing. Um, what I've noticed was there was this vile smell, because if you remember the house, the toilet was downstairs. So as you walk through the, the front door, the front door was at the side of the house. Uh, you walked in, there was, the toilet was on the left, the stairs were on the right, you walked down a hallway turned right went through that door into the into the dining room and then turned left into the living room and through into the kitchen it was a bit of an odd shaped house um so the toilet was downstairs and we'd have kind of like end up being bickering arguing sometimes on a friday night and i'd say uh, saturday morning i said so we had the bad belly last night no one right the, the bathroom stunk absolutely stunk and then right? it moved upstairs and then we noticed it it would kind of like go upstairs it'd be on the landing so what we noticed straight away if we started bickering the smell would be about or it will turn up eventually through the evening yeah. uh, sometimes it would be there before we start as soon as we noticed the smell it was like stop stop change it from negative to positive we'll disagree, you, we'll when, when you, disagree we'll change it when, so when you say that. stop you you mean stop your bickering you actually yeah. you really you noticed straight away you were feeding yeah. the energy by we your bickering. Feeding it. we were feeding it it, it that's, was a sort that's of energy that would make you very angry mm. Mm. It would make you very angry really focused on anger so whatever the entity was knew what it was doing it encouraged yeah. you to be angry to feed itself yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah did you figure that out at the time it took about three or four smells before we got to it and then i think the last time it was uh i went upstairs and it was on the landing and we'd been at bickering not only because of me because i'm having a drink and i've become a pain in the ass argumentative you know as it is as uh, so. went upstairs it's like the smells upstairs i, I walked down to jan and i said well, let's stop just go upstairs she walked up she said that smells up there and i'm like yeah right then as soon as we hear that as soon as we smell it we calm it off straight away mm. whether it was there to stop us from rowing mm. or whether it was there to want us to row i don't yeah. know yeah. there's no answer but yeah. once we we can kind of like started to recognize this Thing. so these are the little things that we used to piece together yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's it it's a fascinating story it's very unusual yeah it's being aware it's all it is yeah. because yeah. we were starting to get used to it because we i was starting to get used to the weird things that were going on in the house yeah. uh there'd be many a time where i'd be out in the garden i hear jan shouting and i'm like shouting back and she's danny so i'm walking i'm walking from what do you want she's nothing so were you shouting me so I wasn't uh, I could hear you shouting me you know there was a woman's voice shouting me the only person in the house is Jan 
and right. she's probably in the back room or whatever and she's like yeah. I, I wasn't shouting yet that used to happen regularly but um, how do you how do you account for that do you think there was somebody wanting you to go in the house or just playing a game with you i don't know right. i couldn't answer it i don't know all i know that was generally shouting me i walked in she was uh, she wasn't right she hadn't shouted me at all that happened several times over the years um uh, jan, jan did you ever hear any voices did you yes. ever get called you did yes what would that I'd be hear, i'd hear voices i'd hear i woke up um in the middle of the night to children laughing and i thought my youngest two lads a bit of prankers were playing in the middle of the night so i walked out the bedroom walked onto the landing i walked in the bedroom and it was pitch black and they were fast asleep so i walked into the, my girl's bedroom and they were fast asleep and my other son was fast asleep so when i walked back into my bedroom i went to turn my bedroom light off and realized i turned it on um and i i couldn't figure it out because i thought it was daylight <laughs> i honestly thought it, i'd put the light on or something but it was light I, I i turned the light back off got it back into bed and it started again so i got up again and i couldn't find anything i just heard kids laughing um i'd hear children cry i'd hear a whistle um i'd hear a woman uh talking i'd we'd be lying in bed nobody in in the house at all the kids had gone down to my grandmother's uh, to my mother's and somebody would be talking downstairs we go downstairs and there's nobody there hear them talking having a conversation mad it was just bonkers was there any was there anywhere in particular in the house that was a focus or was it everywhere everywhere any room any room didn't make any difference right um uh, the thing is once we started realizing that button uh, a positive look on it instead of letting it feed on our, as soon as jan started uh calming down it eased off but yeah. we would know the atmosphere would change and like this was every day we'd go one two three months with absolutely nothing and then all of a sudden the atmosphere in the house would change and we knew there was something about so this is where we'd start kind of like recording stuff and uh leaving stuff uh i'd leave a uh, evp running through the night and sit there for hours listening to it and there'd be nothing on it uh but every now and again we would get something so it it, it was regular but kind of like spread out uh one of the things that was uh, we one of the things that we knew something was going on was our bedroom was at the front of the house house and outside the house there was a street light and because we only had light curtains that light would shine through it would really brighten the room up and it would go pitch black in there and i mean you couldn't see your hand in front of your face right. where you should do because there's a light outside there's yeah. a street light outside yeah. they were one that was one of the signs that we knew that we were going to have a sometimes it lasts for three days sometimes it lasts for three weeks and it, something would happen once a day or once every other day but there was something noticeable because we started becoming aware of these things uh one day one night i woke up in the middle of the night it was pitch black uh, which became we get became used to it so i walked down the stairs going to the toilet and then standing in the corner of the hallway was a little girl and i'm like we haven't got any little girls here <laughs> you know she, she was about six seven something like that she was the size it was female she was size she wasn't you couldn't actually truly see a the face or anything but yeah. it was about a six-year-old girl with long with long blonde hair yeah um, and as i walked to her she just disappeared and i'm just like oh that was quick that was a bit mad yeah i've had a know? few few similar experiences where you see outline outline shapes and figures and there's no definition there so i've, I've seen that a, a few times i have seen a couple of very very clear apparitions extremely clear 
but they're rare. They're very, very rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Man Mandy's asked a question, which partly you answered before. She says, "Are you still living there?" Which you're not. I know you're not. No. Uh, and she said, "Did you tell the people that moved into your house about what had been happening when you moved out?" No, no, <laughs> nobody in there. No, what it was, the council took the house back. They moved, out, <clears throat> and then out of the kindness of their hearts, because we only had a coal fire for years, they decided to refurb the whole house after we left. Right. So they would have spent a couple of months refurbing the house and then put people in it. By that time, we've moved down here, so we didn't yeah, right. have the opportunity to speak to the people because we moved out the area, you know. W would you have dared to tell people if uh, if you had? I, do, I asked a lot of my neighbours. A lot of my friends lived up there, and they know what the house was like. Yes. Um, a lady that lived across the way from me I'm, I'm really good friends with her daughters moved, her daughter moved in next door to us and she was she could hear stuff in the house um well the next door house on. was empty for about six and months and we could hear people in there we could hear people banging and you know, <coughs> making a racket and we walked the dog and there'd be no car on the drive and no lights on or nothing there was no one in the house but somebody was banging next door like doing work there yeah. and we knew there was no one in the house you know yeah during so, the time during the during this time when things were happening you get a lot of activity related to electrical equipment hmm. was there anything physical happened to other objects in the house uh anything moved touch broken things like that uh no um kids kids stuff would go missing whatever they were doing they'd come down get the tea go back up it'd gone and it didn't matter, we'd all look for it and you couldn't find it. And in the end, I used to, somebody said to me, why don't you ask for it back? So I did, and it started reappearing, but in different places. Right. You know, somewhere where they hadn't been. I think um, would move. Yeah. Like, we'd, sit, we'd, we'd be sitting on the sofa and like the ashtray would move on its own. <laughs> you know, yeah. and we'd be like, or a cup. did you see that? <laughs> and like, well, do it again, and it wouldn't. Yeah, you know, so man, man, Mandy's just uh, came back before, and she says, "I'll I'll put two two things that she's asked here. Did you know what was haunting your home, and do you know if it's still going on now? Uh, Did you ever figure it out what it was? The gentleman I used to call Peter. Right. I don't know why, but I used to call Peter. There was a little girl. There was Peter." there was other things that come in that we didn't know what were but the most prominent ones were and i mean the most prominent one to jan was the, the, the guy we called peter that i never witnessed and then there's a little girl that we both witnessed you know yeah. uh, i think i may have witnessed who we called peter once and that was i woke up in the middle of the night and there was someone looking over me right. guy looking over me yeah. and it had been busy for about two weeks and it was just that to get on your nerves and I sort of half opened my eyes and this guy's looking at us but you go away mm. turned over went to sleep you know uh, because sometimes it would get too much it would be you know and it was more the atmosphere the atmosphere would drain you you know yeah. but it's, it's so many different things yeah. coming in and out but yeah. it was just mainly the two that were more prominent than anything else, you know. So, uh, back to the original question: Do you, did you ever figure out how it had all come about and started, or do you think it was just your presence there that well, we thought fed, it, up, fed up your energy? We, we thought it was our presence, our presence there, hmm. and then we were thinking when we move, it will all come and follow us here, yeah. Yeah. but it didn't. didn't. Right. So then we thought well obviously it had to be the building or the area another thing that was quite weird was uh an emf meter yeah so you hold the emf meter and it senses that way and you put it closer it, it can like uh senses the electronic magnetic field around it so there was times where if you turned it down like that it would go off if you turned it up it would go off if you left it central it wouldn't do anything right so we did this in the house it would do that hmm. we went out in the middle of the road it do exactly the same thing you'd get a, a magnetic fields above us 
or below us, but nothing parallel, mm. which is really weird. Mm. Try the same experiment a couple of weeks later, and then it wouldn't do it. Which is really strange because if it's a magnetic, uh, an electric magnetic field, there has to be a source. Yeah. yeah. So if you're if you've got an electric cable running underneath the path, it would pick it up. But why would it pick it up going upwards? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, and it, all, also, strange. yeah, yeah. It would be constant, wouldn't it? It wouldn't. It would. Yeah. Be yeah. So that was one of the weird things from a scientific point of view. A compass wouldn't be, wouldn't work in the house. Yeah, the compass and it wouldn't work outside. Yeah, it would spin, just spin, and then try it a couple of weeks later, and then it would work. Mm. It was really odd, really strange going on, like you know. Yeah. And I couldn't work that one out at all. Why yeah. the compass wouldn't work, and that it would just spin, you know. There's, there's, I mean, I know, I know, you know, I, I'm into gadgets and I make things, and there's umpteen different types of technology that, if I was invited to look at that house now, I'd bring loads of different types of kit along to mm. try and detect these unusual changes and see if you make anything yeah. out of them. But I was talking to someone last night, and um, I've always said you don't get any reasonable results from existing technology. That's why I, I try and experiment to make things unusual and something different and alternative yeah. but that i'm just going off on a tangent there mm. um, <clears throat> um <laughs> holly has asked a question i know what your answer is going to be she says silly as it sounds do you miss living in the house yes yeah i do you yeah. i thought you were going to say um, no, yeah. do you yeah. yeah yeah once we had a break from it yeah, yeah. it was all right it was but, all right yeah, it's, it's really quiet here yes. yeah and it's like i'm, I'm you can I wish something had happened sometimes. Right. right. Oh, I, was, I, I thought you would, I was definitely going to put money on you saying, no, you don't miss it. No, yeah. No, we, we do miss it. it. We do miss it, yeah. We used to see orbs. Now, I'm not talking orbs on photographs. Yes, yeah. We used to see lights. They would sprinkle, sprinkle lights above. Different colours. Yeah. Uh, you used to see them a lot. I used to catch them. Uh, they'd be kind of like spring, like, they're not like orbs, they're lights. An yeah, orb is yeah, yeah. of an energy sphere, isn't it? That's yeah. these were like flashing lights, little tiny flashing lights. And I found that if I I'd noticed them in my corner of my eye, as soon as I turned around, I'd, they were gone. And then I try and catch them again, and I couldn't catch them. So I found that if I caught them, then I wouldn't look, and I'd sit there and watch them, and I'd say, "Listen, Jack, they're above your head." Yeah. And I know if I'm going to turn, I'm going to lose that kind of like that sight. And I won't see them for weeks, but things like that used to happen. But we never had proper, you know, the the, the energy ball orbs that we yeah. see now and again. We never had them. No, never, never saw them ever. Uh, there's, there's two. There's two little stories I'll just relate to that. One is at Plaz Tag in the the Great Chamber above the, on the first floor. Mm. If and people don't always do that when you visit, but if you spend some time there sitting on the floor looking up at the ceiling quite often we would see the sparkly lights in the ceiling which yeah. might or might not relate to a story that i'm not going to elaborate but it's a story that no one knows but it'll go in my book it's a secret story that someone told me years ago it might relate to that i'm not sure yeah um and the other thing is we myself steve and steve's girlfriend michelle we witnessed a glowing ball of light that moved along for about two or three meters right in front of us in the king's head in the front of the building mm. in the king's head not caught on photograph or video very the most bizarre occurrence of an orb that we've ever seen that was about the size of a tennis ball something like that yeah and a, and a purpley mauve color as well but it literally hugged the floor and, and moved along the floor not even in a straight line we all yeah. saw it independently we didn't actually say anything straight away it was only after the event and one of us said did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. We got very excited about it. And that is one of the our talking points of orbs as well. Because as you know, most people get excited about orbs on photographs. And there's an explanation yeah. for all of those. And it's not paranormal. Yeah. We both know this. Yeah. The other ones, yes. Anything other than that, yeah. That gets yeah. interesting. Well, the, the plastic orbs, they can be any colour, can't they? Yeah. I've, seen, I, I've only ever seen one which was yellow. Right. Um, but I've had reports of people seeing white, blue, green, all different colours, you know, and different sizes as well, like, you know, so 
it's just, we never saw that in the house, did we? No. Never saw, but we did see little sparkly lights, which was quite different. Um, well, in the, in the King's Head, a few of us have seen, I've seen it a few times, is um, red flashing lights, little specks of red light. Mm. Mm, the yeah. first time I saw one in one of the guest rooms, I could have sworn it was the same sort of flash of light from a, a smoke detector that flashes once every 30 seconds or once a minute. Yeah. And yeah. when we put when we put the lights on, I was going to swear there was a smoke detector above a wardrobe and there was nothing there, absolutely nothing. Yeah. But bizarrely enough, other people have seen the same flash of light in the same area. I've seen the same one about three times in that area. Mm. So there is something very odd about it. It is one yeah. of the more yeah. puzzling things about what we do. There is yeah. something because I've witnessed it myself. But th there's no answer. That there's no. We don't know what they are. So we can catch one and analyze it. Yeah. We don't know what they are. What, just, yeah, but that's what that's what we're out to do, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's what we're looking for is to, to try and get to these answers. Yeah. Um, one of the things we did last night, I had a piece of kit which I've never used out and about before, is to got someone to do a Kev did a walk around with this device. It senses electrical energy and turns it into light. Yeah. and audio and as he walked around there's a couple of prominent places where it gave a reaction so we did an evp recording in that area and we did catch i said before i yeah. believe yeah. a child or a female voice um when mm. i get to uh put it onto the computer i'll well, uh, i'll put it out we can it. play you one if you want this is yeah Man Man mandy's actually asked the question did you ever do any evps so uh well, yes yes, yeah. the extra, yes Mandy. and yeah. danny <laughs> danny's gonna, gonna play that for us now well, this EVP was uh, recorded in our bedroom. Yeah. Uh, it's about a six, seven minute, uh, a second clip. Mm. And the original um, audio file is about 40 minutes. And so obviously, as we were analysing what we'd recorded, we found the EVP. Uh, a friend of mine has, he said it's a classically A uh evp which is you actually hear the word yes mm. what you, in the little clip you'll hear jam will say uh will you show us the lights mm. and you hear a little girl's voice says yes mm. now that that comes from a 40 minute uh, evp if anybody who's watching fancies having a copy of the evp uh and analyzing it yourself you're more than welcome do you think uh, that was the only one you heard on that recording, or do you think there might be more there? There was other stuff, but it wasn't as clear mm -hmm. as the little girl saying yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'll get it up. Uh, but like I say, if people think, well, that could have been somebody else in the room, mm -hmm. then they have the whole e EVP to listen to, to uh, obviously analyze it themselves you know but there are little bits and bobs on there so i'll play it now it's 11 seconds you'll hear jan say will you show us the lights okay. or will you show us some lights and then you hear the answer of a little girl say yes okay did you hear that yeah, just play it one more time again for us, Dan, please. Now, the confusing thing about that, if you look at it from a science point of view, and my, how a microphone works. So a microphone is a diaphragm that moves and turns that movement into electrical signals and it records our voice so when you hear that little girl say yes which we didn't hear at the time yeah we didn't hear it at all we didn't think oh wow yeah that was great because you hear no reaction from us whatsoever yeah uh how has that diaphragm moved to create that sound to create that electrical signal to record somebody say yes yeah. when we didn't even hear it in the room yeah. You know, it, it's, it's one of the things I've puzzled over quite a lot. My conclusion is, as you've just said, um, if you're not hearing it with your ears, sound is it's essentially it's a, a physical vibration. Um, yeah. It comes from our throats, it comes out of our voice. It's a physical vibration. Yeah. Our ears turn it into something we can hear. Yeah. And the microphone turns it into electrical. This is the critical part. Turns it into electrical yeah. energy that then can be recorded either on tape 
or digitally. Mm-hmm. So there's a process that's bypassing the vibration that a microphone conventionally picks up. Yeah. So in my, my view is EVPs, such as the one you've got, and I've got quite a few of my, my own, mm-hmm. are not traditional voices that have been emitted from the same as us. When from we're a sound talking. wave. A yeah. sound wave. They yeah. are more related to a, th- a thought field, a consciousness, of an electrical energy. <coughs> energy that's what i think we're at the microphones are picking up and i yeah. think for a spirit to be able to do that is extremely difficult because microphones are designed to pick up our vibrating sound from our voices yeah not yeah. electrical energy mm. so whenever you capture something like that my thought is first it's difficult for a spirit to do it second is the spirit has got to be very close to that microphone that sensor it's something on your mic i can hear your mic rattling sorry um no, my uh, mic's sitting on the on the uh, desk right in front of me. So. Yeah, it sounds like it's rattling it's like around. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I might have been t- I might have been touching the cable. That might have been it. Sorry. Ah, uh, right. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but part of my experiments, the piece of kit I've used quite a bit. It, it, I bolted together six, eight, or ten mic elements all connected to the recorder at the same time to try and improve detecting that type of electrical energy. I still yeah, think it's very, very difficult. But yeah, you, 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 you're. I think you're on the exactly the same thought process as me. Mm. It's, it's not a physical thing. It's no, uh, it can't be physical. No, you can physically hear it. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, that that EVP, the whole forty minutes. What I'll do, I'll probably drop it onto a file share site somewhere, and I'll send you a link. And if people want to analyze it themselves, they're more than welcome. Right, yeah. If uh, if you do that, I'll put it out on uh, my Facebook page. Anyone that wants to take a listen to that, yeah. and I will certainly grab a copy and have a listen through to it as well, Danny. Yeah, well, I'll email you a copy. It's only small, it's only a small file. I, I, I've got yeah, yeah. quite a bit to record for, uh, to listen to from last night as well, but I'll get through that in the next day <laughs> or two. So, yeah, I, I'll get through them. Don't worry, I'll get through. Um, yeah. Holly's asked, and um, I think I asked you earlier on um did you know what the history of the house or what was on the land before it uh no. did that relate to the activity no he didn't know anything about it at all no no you know, I, I don't I, I don't really it's hard to say because the amount of old buildings that we go into and we find nothing yeah so is it a link between the history and something that's there or, or is it something that's happening today I don't know. I don't think there is a particular link between what's happened into a, in a building throughout its history. Yeah. Because if you went into every building you were going, you would kind of like witness something. Yes. So why is it just single individual buildings that have this activity? If it had something to do with the land or what had happened in it, then every house would be haunted, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. Like that. Yeah. So, uh, I think there's something in the the in the stone tape theory. Some people still dismiss it. I'm still quite open to it because I have, from my point of view, I haven't conducted enough experiments yet. But mm. um, that involves once again much more specialized technology. Still yeah. trying to detect energy waves, but turning them directly into audio. Uh, yeah. to be able to listen to but not using microphones using different kinds of detectors and then yeah. i can go down the route of actually creating an electromagnetic field of high frequency beyond our hearing range but then listen to any echo response from it yeah that we can hear in our range isn't it? yes yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, a future experiment and the abbey that we went to last night i will put some kit together to experiment there because that is a much older building than i realized Mm. It goes back to the 1100s. I didn't realise it was quite so old. Yeah. So, yes. Um, Mandy has come back again because uh, this is one of Mandy's favourites. Have you ever? You, did you ever use a spirit board to ask any questions in the house? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and. <laughs> yeah, it'd be quite interesting. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be quite interesting. Other yeah. times it would just be bonkers. It would just nothing would make sense. Yeah. Uh, because we're not because Jan can pick up and stuff and all the rest of it and I can then we don't really use spirit boards to be honest uh, but when we did use them they would either be 
just just completely unfathomable yeah or bits of information would come through and then i'd be kind of like trying to kind of like chase that information and you'd go off into rabbit holes and stuff like that you know uh so there wasn't anything really uh significant come out of it there wasn't anything really concrete like oh the board said this and we backed it up with this information mm. we didn't have anything like that so but then again we do we use the boards every now and again but because we we both do reiki and stuff and we, we would always um, that house we were terrible at cleansing it terribly cleansing it all the time like you know uh it's one of the things we sort of kept on top of it to keep it positive but uh do you remember the guy sitting on the bath oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was christmas day and i had a few a few over <laughs> for, for christmas and you make christmas dinner and you have a little bit of a drink um and my daughter sent me to bed about nine o'clock <laughs> and i went to bed as i'm going through the hallway to go upstairs i sort of turned into the bathroom and there was a gentleman sitting on the side of the bath right. um he was very slim ginger curly hair pale complexion he had a green top on and jeans which were down by his ankles and he had a, like a, a silver and black pair of trainers on and i'm like oh okay i thought perhaps somebody's asked him in and i haven't heard any right okay i'm going to bed i got up the next morning and asked my daughter who was a friend and she said i didn't have a friend I, <laughs> I said, yeah. would, would you say that, that that was one of the clearer views you that had was then? the clearest thing i've ever seen right did you see facial features was it that clear yeah Detroit? yeah, oh. yeah. But you didn't recognise him, obviously. Not at all. No, no. No, nothing at all. Did um, Did you mention it to all of the visitors that came to your house that day? Yes. And no, did anyone recognise him? Well, at first I thought it was my daughter's so-called boyfriend or friend yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then I asked Danny who was his mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. It was only me, Beth, and I think Fee, had gone to, Fee was there. You've gone to bed. Yeah. We were just sitting down. Everyone TV. had gone home, it was just us. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, one of the weirdest things that happened was uh, Jan lost a, a mum about six, seven years ago. Eight years ago. Eight now. years ago. And it was the first Christmas without her because she died the 1st of January. And we'd had 12 months and we come to Christmas. And it was difficult, you know, it's the first time, you know, first time without your, without your mum on it and uh, everyone come to us so that the house is full of kids and people and everything you know and uh there was a knock on the front door and i didn't hear it but your dad and a couple of uh, says someone went to the front door there's nobody there they come back in so working like spread between the, the the living room and the kitchen i'm sitting in the living room and must have been about half an hour later somebody knocked on the opposite side of the living room door so someone on the other side of the door knocked three times and every the whole kind of like room just went quiet because we knew everyone that was in the house was in either that room or the kitchen there was nobody else in any other rooms so yeah. we walked to the door opened the door and there was nobody there <laughs> and that was full on everyone stopped and everybody heard it and it was somebody knocking three times on the on the the the, uh, the living room door from the opposite side right so things like that used to happen quite, right. quite well when, when you've got um albeit say friends and family do you remember what their reaction was at that time well everyone went just the whole it was such a weird thing for somebody because we knew everyone all the kids were accounted for yeah. everyone was in that in them two rooms there was nobody else in the house apart from them two rooms and we were all in there so there's no one should have been knocking on the door so the whole room went completely quiet 
the two rooms went completely yeah. quiet and so chris looked at me i looked at chris and i looked at your dad so i got up i opened the door and there was no one there and i closed the door i said i think when wants to know that she's here yeah. <laughs> and I uplifted then like you know um but yeah things like that would happen um how 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 <laughs> Holly's come back with um, a question. He said, "She says um, we worried that uh, spirits would attach them to you and follow you." Um, but what I'd just like to tag on the end is, whenever the activity was quite high, do you think anything or anyone followed you outside the house, i.e., when you went to work or went to the shop? No, no, no. I don't believe that spirit that spirit attachment is real. No, I know I'm. I'm the same. Actually, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. honestly don't think yeah. spirit, uh, spiritual attachments. No, they manipulate the atmosphere. Mm. Can get you arguing stuff like that, but I don't think attachments. I think that's pretty much. Uh, you know, I, I, I agree. With you. I think. I think, I think people misinterpret, as you say, spirits can affect you to try and make you feel uncomfortable or yeah. give an impression or something like that people yeah. then misinterpret that as attachment and i, I agree with you entirely yeah, yeah. Um, and i i i do personally i i never feel affected when i go to a location i can sense energy but i don't particularly go to anywhere looking for that but i can i can feel when the atmosphere changes yes yeah um i've always been very very well able to protect myself shield myself even bef way before i was into paranormal that was something i did in my childhood and it's probably yeah. that was something that happened because you know it's just my faith that was something was going to happen in the future so it was a gift that was given to me a long long time ago so yeah. this is why i i don't have any problems going around any of these locations but i am i do no. i do feel aware of things around but never yeah. never, never gets to me I, I just like to be the observer of it all. Yeah, and sit there and go, wow, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and yeah. if necessary, when other people start to feel uncomfortable, then I can go there and feel strong enough to comfort and help people. Um, I, I think, like I say again, if we don't understand it, we can like naturally kind of like wire to fear. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's one of the things we've been on, been, been to places where. Oh well, if you do, if if this goes to see, will they follow me home? Is it will you work here? Mm. They can follow you home any time they want to. If they follow you home, yeah, yeah. So they don't follow you home. Yeah, you know, and that's just what the media and the films and stuff. Uh, of. Yeah, yeah. I think that is unfortunately yeah, that's absolutely. the biggest influence. Yeah, we we tend yeah. to follow too much on that silver screen that we all watch, or the little yeah. one, or the big one, and some people are more likely to follow it too much and too strongly yeah. they believe it to be a truth and it's not yeah no it's not you know yeah. but yeah. it's just one of them but i mean when, when we lived in the house yeah some points when when me and the kids were on our own it was frightening but you taught me don't fear don't it don't fear it um, don't fear it find out what they want yeah you towards the end then, as you as you wound down before you moved <coughs> to that house and you two yeah. have been together for some time and what you just said there, Danny pointed you in the direction of not fearing it and yeah. promoting, let's just say, promoting happiness and good feelings. Mm. Did yeah. you feel more comfortable at that time? Was it was it something you could cope with better? Yes. Right. Um, when I first met Danny, we first got together, yeah, I was still frightened. I was frightened of being in the house on my own, having the light turned out, yeah. uh, being in the dark. It is, it, it is when you first see stuff like that you know stuff moving that shouldn't be moving there's no logical explanation yeah. you're straight away if you know nothing about it you, you're programmed to fear because you don't yeah. understand yeah. what's going on yeah. the more it goes on the fear builds until you can like meet someone and say well that's interesting and they take a completely different look at it yeah yeah, yeah yeah you, yeah. you know uh um, I, I've seen that so many times at Plastag is people allowing the fear to build up upon themselves. Yeah. Um, well, and I've just been the observer there. I said, oh, right, that's okay. That's fascinating. That, and yeah. they've let it go one way. And I the think imagination runs away with them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We've been to places where people have wound themselves up that much. Yeah. 
yeah, and they're yeah. like, oh, I can't go in this room. I've got yeah. to go. I'm shaking. I can feel this. I'm like, there was one night at Plastec many, many years ago where there was a group of about eight or nine girls that um, had organised a night out to come on, on a ghost hunt there. Yeah. The main, the main organiser, the one that put it all together, up to a certain point, she was very, very enthusiastic. When we actually went upstairs, and I think the room, first room they were going to go into was a twin poster room, as soon as she saw how dark it was, she could not go in that room, and she didn't mm -hmm. go in the room. She spent most of the evening downstairs by the fire. She she terrified herself, but she was the one who yeah. wanted to go there more than anyone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was. And the thing is, you'll find people who have been on these uh, paranormal evenings, uh, which are basically, I'd say, ninety percent of them are entertainment evenings you get the odd teams who are definitely into not putting a show on and seeing what will happen in the house like they do in plastic there's a few other teams that i've met who are very much like scientifically based but i'd say a good 90 90 95 percent of them are all just for the money and the show and stuff yeah. and you get people saying oh well i went on a paranormal night and it's like that's got nothing to do with investigation yeah. It's got nothing to do with paranormal night, it's got nothing to do with investigation whatsoever. Investigation yeah. is a prolonged time at a place yeah. collecting data. Yes. You know, um it's the amount of times that we've been in places where we've spent weeks and weeks and weeks and nothing, then all of a sudden you get one thing. You know, it's yeah, yeah that's what paranormal investigation is yeah about. yeah well as you know uh, uh, i've been at the king's head for a long long time sorry just not yeah. right. and um yes that's definitely the case you can spend a long long time and absolutely nothing happens but yeah. that also tells you the baseline of when nothing's happening you know there's nothing happening and when something significant happens it stands out because it's yeah. different and it's observable yeah. well, the, atmos the atmosphere changes you think right then we're in for the a good couple of weeks the house was like that it'd yeah. be quiet for months nothing then all of a sudden it starts up again did you ever find any conclusion why there was these lulls and and peaks no no it was still going on until the day we left yeah 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 there was it was you would go out to work and there'd be nothing for ages and you'd come back and it'd be like oh god it's thick in here mm. And that's, then, that's, a, that's a really bizarre one, isn't it? That there's mm, no, uh, yeah. nothing to coincide with what uh, yeah. triggered yeah. it. And I suppose the difference, because we were living there, we are noticing, we were noticing the changes. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things I noticed more is that if I'd be doing Reiki treatments there, there would be a lot more in, in the room as I was doing, you know, and are you saying a lot, a lot more spirits with you in the room? Is that what you mean? Well, I say spirits. There, there was a lot of energy. Energy in the room, more, right? Okay. Yeah. A lot, a lot of energy in the room. Yeah. If you can if you say spirits or what, but when you would, when I was doing the treatments there, sometimes it could be wall to wall, but nothing ever negative come in when I was working. When right. I was doing the treatments, there was nothing. Never ever. Well, any, anything downstairs, Reiki, anything Reiki is pos positive anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. positive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that that ties that together really quite well, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and it can be quite because I, I, I've done, I've done treatments elsewhere where there's been a few around, the room's been full, uh, and I've done treatments where there's just me. And that's it. <laughs> uh, but the only thing I know, the only difference I noticed is that when I was doing the treatment there, I was thinking, well, if it's negative, obviously it's going to try and come in, but it, and it just stayed out. It knew to stay away, mm. you know. So is it intelligent? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, from, yeah. From, from likes of EVP call-outs that I've done on many occasions, and again, you never, ever... You're never guaranteed to get a result. No, but no, no. On occasion, you would get uh, a positive response. I.e., one, one in particular. Uh, this was Mandy that called this out in the King's Head many years ago, and we were sensing an energy presence in a bathroom off one of the rooms, and mm. she was asking if the person would let us know who they are, 
and this this was this is why I call this intelligence because the recording we made was a gravelly, croaky voice saying, "Okay, curious, Earl Spencer." Earl Spencer being the name, not a title, but his first name, his name. The, the yeah. intelligent part, from my view, is a slight level of frustration to Mandy, as we always do, we all call out quite a lot. Yeah. And it's, okay, curious, Earl Spencer. And it was it was as if it was a real-time response, as if somebody was there with us and answering a bit gruffly, but answering nevertheless. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I think there is, I, I've, come, I've come to believe that there is intelligence within communication with the spirit yeah. world. Yeah, definitely. Well, I know a lot of people say there's lots of different levels of spirit contact or different spirits. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't disagree with that. But if you ask questions in the right way, where there can be a, there can be a potentially sensible answer, I think it gives yeah. you a greater chance of getting a response. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the, the people um, that do negative call outs, I think they're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> I think so. I would say 90% of the time, yeah, but sometimes if you've got something that feels really negative, maybe a negative response would be apt to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, you just have to play with these things. You've got to yeah. figure it out. Go with, go with what you feel. And if you think a negative response to a negative energy would get a response, a better yeah. response, yeah. then why not try it? Mm. But most of the time, 90% of the time it's positive. Yes. Uh, and I, I suppose it, it doesn't help when you do these um, paranormal evenings that people are so afraid. I think that pushes a lot of it away because they're... they're yeah, they're, 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 they're blocking they, out, aren't they? They're blocking yeah. through fear. Um, See, because one of the things that used to happen in the house was Jan and Fee would hear something and I'd be like, I didn't hear a thing. Mm. There was a, a knock upstairs. I didn't hear the thing. Or you heard someone whistle. Or there was a knock at the door, and I wouldn't hear it. And they were like, "It was just them." I said, "No, I didn't." <laughs> then there were times where I would hear stuff. I'd be like, "Do you hear that? Can you hear someone talking in the hall?" Yeah. And they'd be like, I "Can't hear." I said, "I can hear them now. There, listen." And they couldn't hear it. So I don't know whether it's. The, I was I'm on a different wavelength or different yeah. vibration level than her at that time. Mm. I don't know. There was many times where we both hear things, but there was many a time where I I wouldn't hear something, John wouldn't hear something. You know, so how you explain that? Yeah. Because you you know you're hearing something, and if yeah. two of you are hearing it and one doesn't, yeah. why doesn't that one person hear it? Yeah, yeah. That, you know, that, will, that will that will be a puzzle. That yeah. will be a puzzle for some time. There, there is no, as yet, that there's no answer or conclusion to that. Because I've been there as well. You know, working with mm. the same people for a long time. We've all been in that situation. Yeah. yeah. It's why I like to re rely on specifically audio recordings because then you've got something you can replay and listen yeah. back to. And if it's there, it's there, and you know it's there. And if it's not, yeah. it's not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, it was an interesting time there. It would be great to go back. Now yeah. we've had a good break from it. Oh, yeah. After about six months, we were quite missing the place. Yeah. And then afterwards, now, just with you saying, oh, yeah, I'd love to go back. And, yeah. You, yeah. You know, because it was home. Yeah, yeah. You know, or either, yeah, a bit of a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a it was a talking one. point when we had visitors. So. Yeah. 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 And they wouldn't I mean, perform. I mean, that's one of the other things. They wouldn't, <coughs> they wouldn't perform. No. no if we caught it right where the atmosphere was changing we knew that was something going on it would just ease off because we'd have many people around and yeah. said it's getting it's it's warming up in here we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go nothing and as nothing. soon as they go it start yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was and yet some days there were a few few people had come and they witnessed it yeah you know um adrian and jen yeah he came he didn't believe believe it he was techie side of it yeah. and it banged on the door and there was no one else in the house with all of the front room and it frightened yeah. the life out of him yeah yes. frightened so, the life out of him they certainly wouldn't perform but when they did they did, yeah. they, did. They, they, they picked their timing fantastically right but to say come and that house 
if you were kind of like looking at it at a study point of view, unless you lived there or the person who lived there was saying, like something's going to, something's happening, it set your gear up and go, you might get something then. But that place, it was, it'd be very rare for you to witness something. Yeah. Uh, Gaz had witnessed a few things there, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we used to have a mirror in the hallway, which uh, which was pretty strange. So if you come up the bathroom, turn left and walk towards uh, down the hallway next to the stairs and turn right, we had a, a, a mirror on there. And sometimes you'd catch that right in the view. You'd see people behind you. You turn around and... I, I i know in the in the past i i'm, I'm just gonna sort of start and wind this down because we've been talking for about an hour now yeah um i know in the past you've hinted and told me that you the house you lived in had got some interesting activity but we've never spoken in depth about it before and i think it's fascinating i didn't realize how much yeah you had witnessed and how much it affected you and that, that's um, just the the tip of the iceberg we thought i'm like lists and lists of stuff that we, we've just doodled down and jotted down of the stuff we witnessed but there's, yeah, there's, yeah there's a lot of stuff I mean, we were sitting there one night and a blur of color went from one wall straight through the other wall and cut the living room in two it was just a blur of color mm. you know which lasted for seconds oh. we've had things that would be standing behind the, the, uh, the tv which was yeah. glowing like a glowing shape yeah and that lasted for about 10 seconds and then just disappeared all sorts of things would go on there all sorts of weird stuff some some of these things that you're talking about see i start to partially uh, connect this with our very old caveman brains now when we go back to caveman days they had to be very aware of their surroundings to yeah. to literally to survive right, yeah. because there was lots of things out there that would kill them you know i'm talking neanderthal type man yeah and i think there's little elements of our brain that still has this awareness sensing capability now yeah. our modern 21st century world is very very visual very mobile very electronic and there's no need for us to use those inner senses. No. no. But in this setting that you're talking about, and other ones that we've both been to, if you focus your mind either deliberately or accidentally on sensing and listening for unusual things, but we don't yeah. know what we're listening for, we, I think we're partially reversing back to our caveman brains. Mm. And it's that that's connecting us, or we're connecting with this sensing of... of we call it energy we don't know exactly what we're talking we about what but we call is, yeah. it yeah we call it yeah. and i think that that's what it is it's it's part of our brain is switching on that had, doesn't get much use yeah yeah i think we're about, i think it's a part of uh how we will eventually evolve and i i honestly believe that it will maybe in a million years time maybe that um sound and vision will be a thing of the past and we'll be all yeah. be able to think to each other when i was talking about the reiki thing uh the last time we talked uh when i was saying i believe we can like communicate through energy as well and i used to think uh the analogy of being on the phone yeah. you have a good wind your friend puts the phone down they feel drained so i still think that is starting to come through we'll start to notice these things yeah. so i think eventually if we give you know as we evolve maybe yeah you know because at the end of the day we only see a tiny spectrum of light yes yes what else is in that huge amount of yeah. light that we can't yeah. see yeah. the same as sound yeah you know yeah the, the sound I, I think all these little things are part of the mystery that keeps us interested in the paranormal world that we're involved in it's yeah. all these unanswered questions and areas that we may or may not ever in our lifetimes get answers to but it keeps us interested in it all doesn't it of course it yeah. does yeah you know what is the bump at, what's the th what is the thing that goes bump in the night <laughs> you know i don't I mean? know you you tell me you've heard it more than i have so <laughs> <I'm talking about laughs> um, right i'm i'm gonna wind things up now because people mm -hmm. will be wanting to go and use the little room and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever that's the one. say thank you very much for joining me tonight no problem. Um, I have got a, a few other people that want to come forward 
and share their experiences firsthand, things that have uh, happened to them. So I hope to repeat this again next Sunday. Yeah. And probably have a couple more guests on then talking. But I think your story is absolutely fascinating. I didn't realise there was so much to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you've done very well to come through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it brought us together more, yeah. more than anything. Yeah. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, it brought us together. Yeah. You know, so. Right then. Have a thank nice you very, uh, I'll just say thank you to everyone out there that's been listening to us out in uh, Facebook land. I hope you can join me again for the next episode. Uh, if anyone wants to contact me, come through with stories, anything significant that's happened to them firsthand, uh, send me a private message and I'll try and include you in a future broadcast because the more we share these experiences, the, the greater our chances of understanding them, sharing our stories. Mm. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Danny, Jan. And we'll uh, you. see you all next time. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.